Today we will talk about uh, the fox. The presentation comes from uh, Yaya Li. Okay. Welcome, Yaya Li. Okay. Um, so today uh, we'll start off with a question. Uh, so what, uh, number one, looks like a dog, number two, acts like a cat, and number three, sounds like a chicken? If you if you know you can raise your hand. Okay. If if somebody uh, knows answers, you can leave your message on the dialog box. Or raise your hands. Or raise your hands on the for the uh, in the optional chest. Does anyone know the answer? Okay. There's a box. Oh, a yeah. Box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So definitely. today, uh, we'll be talking about foxes. We'll be focusing mainly on red foxes since uh, I know, I, bet, uh, I understand them, I know them better, uh, but the other species will pop up in a while. So let's start. Um, so today we will uh, we will learn about their diets, like what they eat, um, their appearance, and like personality. So first, we'll be starting off of the habitats of like where they live. Foxes are very, uh, foxes can adjust to new conditions, as in they can live in lots of places, so they're adaptable. Um, there are lots of species and they live all over the world. And red foxes are like, um, red foxes are a wide, we spread out omnivore and you can find them throughout uh, most of North America, it, Europe, Asia, and Australia, and some parts of North Africa. And here, this is a map uh, of where the red foxes live. Uh, the red parts are where the red foxes are. The next map is uh, where all the species of fox live. So they live, um, all the, the species of foxes, uh, you can find foxes on every continent except Antarctica, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now we'll be doing, so now it's time for like what they eat. Uh, foxes, they, since they're omnivores, they can eat a lot of stuff, uh, but mostly it's like small animals. They can eat, uh, fruits, vegetables, fruits and vegetables, for example, berries, seeds, and even fungi. It's actually, uh, and being an omnivore actually helps them you know live to different places since they're not very picky about what they eat and here is some of the examples of what they eat uh well there's a rabbit or a bunny uh there's also a bird uh, they also they they can also eat bugs and fish and even frogs vegetables fruits and rodents and for their background or you can say history 
uh, let's just say they can't, uh, foxes have, are, have been around for a very long time. The oldest fossils, uh, people found them in Hungary, which was in Europe. Uh, that, and that was 3.4 to 1.8 million years ago, which is actually a very long time ago. And also, to just to let you know, the humans started like 300,000 years ago, about like that. And the way that the foxes came to North America was by crossing uh, this bridge called the Bering, uh, crossing the Bering Land Bridge, and that happened between 300,000 and 130,000 years ago, which is also a really long time. Um, so that was pretty, so that seems like pretty cool. Um, and red foxes, they're like all, all across the United States, the USA, and you can find, and they're also all over the world, uh, except Antarctica and South America. Since we're only, since uh, this is about the red fox, uh, they don't really, they don't live in South America, but other foxes do, since the fox, uh, since foxes live like all over the world except Antarctica. Anyways, there are 45 subspecies of the red fox. Uh, for example, uh, the American red fox, uh, which the scientific name is Vulpes vulpes fulvus, uh, and the British Columbian fox, Vulpes vulpes aviatorium, are, are two examples of the subspecies out of the 45. And they thrive in US and Canada. And for the name, the name it's from Latin for the the Latin name of or the red fox uh, is Vulpes vulpes, um, like I just told you. Uh, and then Canidae, which is pronounced can uh, d, uh, the family that the fox is like in comes from this word Latin, which is, is canis, and that, and canis means dog. So just to let you know. And here are some examples of uh, the animals that are in the Canidae family, and they're all dogs. So there's the jackal uh, to the, on the, upper left and then there's the dingo which is also a type of dog there's also the african wild dog the wolf including the coyote and doll but those are only some of the examples there are more dog there are more animals that are in the canada family out there but just but here's just like to make you understand better. And here is like the Bering Land Bridge. As you can see, it's kind of blurry, but if but uh, if you look closely, there's a line from Asia to North America. And here it's like, and it says on the top that the dark green that the dark green place is the Bering Land Bridge. And so the, the foxes went, got to North America by co crossing the bridge. And now their behavior. So they're nocturnal, which means they're active at night, but they can, they're, they can go out whenever, whenever they like. But when humans are about, like when they're, you know, working, foxes lay low as in to keep a low profile. Um, 
But the foxes that uh, live in open areas mm -hmm. uh, can become very used to humans, us, like us, um, so that they are unafraid um, when you when they come face to face to a human. So they are unafraid of human contact. And if you find a fox looking at you uh, or observing you uh, for from only a few feet away, don't uh, assume it's a threat. Uh, don't think it's a threat because they're just curious about you. They're curious by nature. And to add some more stuff, foxes are like, I guess you can say they're kind of peaceful creatures uh, because they try to avoid conflict. Unless they are cornered or if they feel like they need to defend themselves or their uh, babies or child are in danger, uh, they won't attack you like humans uh, and they won't even attack children. So they're very, so let's just say they're like peaceful, yeah. Okay. And for the fun facts, we can make like 40 different sounds. Um, the foxes, they can make 40 different sounds, which is pretty cool. And, and yes, they do kind of sound like a, some of them sound like a chicken, but uh, it's very cool, I think. Uh, they're also very independent. So they hunt and sleep alone. Uh, they're not pack animals. So they'd rather be on their own unless they're like having babies or something. And as for the Arctic fox, they're, actually, they're very amazing animals. They, uh, the Arctic fox can handle co the cold uh, uh, better than any animal. It can survive temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees, which is pretty cold. And which is like very cold, but they can still survive. And uh, in the winter, their fur turns uh, white to blend in with the environment, like the snow and stuff. And as you all know, they're very, all the foxes, they are very adaptable. Since um, they, they can live everywhere and anywhere they want mm. which and since they're omnivores like i said they they are and they're not picky eaters and so it's it helps them you know survive better instead of saying oh no i can't i don't want to eat that also they um uh, so, yeah, that that helps them. Now here's the now here's I now I have a question for you. So, do you think that foxes could be pets? Can foxes be pets? Some in some countries. Okay, so someone said. So Anna Lee says, yes, the domestic fox, and, wow, okay, 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 oh, so many yeses, okay, well then, I guess we can find out this, okay, so technically foxes, well, I guess you could say that they can be pets, but it needs to be a domestic fox. It can't, it needs to be a, do, it can't be a domesticated fox. It has to be like a domestic fox. So um, 
the fox needs to like uh, you can you, you if you have a pet you need to uh you need to make sure to get it from an uh, excellent breeder i guess and you need to make sure that it was breaded to like live with humans and yeah uh but you can't but you can't but um you can't have a pet if you can't have the uh, fox as a pet if the fox was was like i guess taken from the wild um but there's this video that i would like to show you of the answer so let's see So let's see. Um, so can you all see this? Can y'all see this? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. We'll be skipping to where the fox is. And the Australian government imposes serious restrictions on exports and keeping them as pets. There's an ad. Okay, skipping that. Number two, fox. Ah, uh, can you resist the charm of this forest beauty? No? Well, in that case, you may be wondering if you can take him home. The truth is that not all kinds of foxes belong in your house. Remember that a domestic fox can be a pet, but a domesticated one is a different thing. The difference between these two species is that the pet or domestic fox is one that was bred specially for keeping at home. They undergo a strict selection process. A domesticated fox is one that was brought from the forest to the home. Foxes have quite a specific character. They are devoted but independent and very curious, trustful, and playful. Finding a common language with this pet will take a long time, so you have to be patient. It'll be easy for the fox to get used to your house if you already have some other pets. Walk your fox on a leash and watch it closely. The animal can swallow a piece of glass or other dangerous objects. Foxes like to hide, so you need to create a den for it. Many dishonest breeders sell puppies of domesticated foxes as domestic ones at a lower price. Trying to save money in this way will not end well. Sooner or later, the animal will show its instincts and begin to attack others, scream at night, and try to break away like crazy. And, of course, never bring an ordinary wild fox into your home for your safety and the safety of your loved ones. Number one. Okay. So we'll be stopping there. And so as you can see, yes, they can be. Some of them can be pets. Uh but you're gonna need to well you're gonna well you're gonna need to make sure that you're ready if, if you want a fo pet fox you, you need to make sure you're ready because uh from as far as i have heard or, or like some of the videos i watched um it said that um well uh they're kind of like i guess they're very naughty um they'll chew your shoes and like yeah um they're, they're no matter how they're, they're still very wild you know and but if you but and also you need to make sure you 
are getting a pet fox from a, a professional breeder or else things could go very wrong yeah now we're gonna we're going to kind of i guess wrap this up uh by by watching this video um that uh by first uh well, we'll be first listening to uh what a fox sounds like because well some of you might not believe that they sound like a chicken but um uh, and then after we will be uh doing we will be watching a small bit of fox tales it is a very informative i guess video it and it, it's uh and i will send the link in the chat if any of you want to finish it i guess because we want to be watching all of it so first it's gonna so first we're, we'll be uh listening about what's the fox sounds like in uh to, in my opinion it sounds more like a rooster not like a chicken but yeah we might all think different <laughs> like a chicken who think it sounds like a chicken anyone we all think differently don't we no one no one think it sounds like a chicken I personally think it's very close <laughs> Oh, it sounds, oh, yeah, everyone thinks differently. Uh, it kind of sounds like a human screaming, but in my opinion, it sounds, it, it kind of like, in my opinion, it sounds like more of a chicken. It, let, listen it to it again. It's more like, I don't know, it sounds more like a rooster to me, you know, like, not the cock a doo kind, but, you know, the other one. think it sounds like a uh, rooster but not like the cockadilla do thing more like I don't, I don't really know but i think it sounds like a rooster which we all think differently some of you might think of the human screaming uh foxes are very um interesting creatures <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say it, it should explain everything Yes. Now we'll be doing the tales of a fox, I guess. Now this is fifty-three minutes, so we will so we will be skipping some parts, but I'll put the link in the chat if you want to watch the whole video. But it's very um it's very educational, let's just say. Okay. Spend a lifetime studying them. Red foxes are smart. They can change their behavior to take advantage of any opening that arises. 
There are complex species that are so adaptable. They are fascinating species to study. And you think you know it all, then you realize you know very little. Don't be fooled by their cheeky charm. These creatures rival man's drive to dominate the landscape. The question is, have we met our match? of their natal den is similar the world over but every family's story is different red foxes have been running up and down this coastline for thousands of years but this vixen is unusual oh and i forgot to tell you this um, but another thing about foxes is a uh, female fox is called a vixen and uh, a male one is called a dog fox. I'll tell you more like uh, when they when they get to the part. She's a uniquely colored and rarely seen kind of red fox. Her striking coat is ideal camouflage for this environment, her home territory. She's roamed it for years, but now she's sticking close to one specific spot. Her pups are growing restless. They're eager to break free from the confines of their den. Now, under their mother's watchful eye, they emerge into a bright new world. Their mother has found an ideal playpen, a grassy meadow hidden in the rocks. It keeps them safe and out of sight from predators. Here, they'll get the chance to stretch their legs and adjust to life on the outskirts of a small fishing village on an island in the Atlantic Ocean. like cute play, but there's more going on than meets the eye. With each bite and grab, these pups are battling for dominance. And also, uh, to let you know, um, um, one of the, I've learned that's like one of the pups mates that they fight for dominance uh you know like the top you know the best sleeping spot uh food uh, and also like one of the pups mate might not make it out of the life of the den which is very sad but it's for survival so the victor gains all the rewards like first dibs on food and the best sleeping spots Bodybuilding perks that sharpen a pup's chance of surviving to adulthood. This battle may finish above ground, but it began for these youngsters, like it does for all red fox pups, weeks earlier underground. 
Sandra Alvarez Betancourt is the first scientist to gain a unique perspective into the underground world of foxes. She spent several years analyzing a thousand hours of fox home movies filmed inside a red fox den in the wild. It's really hard to get to see all these behaviors. And I was the first one, the lucky one, to get to see them and try to look at their behavior and extract as much information as I could from them. <laughs> Sandra discovered that red fox pups develop their social hierarchy much earlier than anyone suspected. From the third week. Animals are moving into the cities. They're not and they're coming to us as much as we might be coming to them. And we're going to discover that a lot of these animals are probably more adaptable than we've ever given them credit for. Maybe it's out of necessity they have to do that, but it also might be. In a heartbeat. Being over food. But that you have in your neighborhood are all the squirrels are small mammals. All those are prey items for fox. What we found is that they maintain a pretty natural diet. So what you'd expect red fox to eat out in the country, we're finding them eating here mostly in the city. And typically what we find is that they tend to be a little bit heavier and healthier because there's just so much food here for them to eat. And they're not hurting for a meal, so to speak. Once they're outside more often, feeding and fighting over food, the area becomes much messier. I guess you can say foxes like to be, I don't know, tidy? And their sloppy housekeeping can be a magnet for other animals. their size an urban coyote uh, coyotes are predators of the fox you know they don't really have it easy. uh foxes don't really have it easy it's very sad but it's also for survival which is yeah the formidable threat to a red fox mother is right to be so concerned. These pups are an easy meal for predators. One swipe of that coyote's paw could kill a pup in a heartbeat. Her alarm shrieks warn her pups, danger, stay underground. Something else is going on here. She's taunting the coyotes, baiting them to chase her in a last ditch effort to lure them away and save her pups. As I said, I'll be sending the link in the chat so you can, if you want, you can finish it. Uh, so you can watch the whole video at home, but we'll be skipping most of the parts because it's. Okay. To me, they're such an intelligent animal. They're very adaptable, they're very successful. Stephen Harris is one of the world's leading authorities on red fox. And he spends a lot of time with them. Also, to take care of the babies, I, I'm just going to add something real quick. Um, uh, they, uh, the dad and mom, they, they have different, I guess, roles. So the dad is um, in charge of like getting the food for the pups and the mom is the one protecting and guarding them while the male is out looking for stuff to eat, I guess you could say. <laughs> You always think of the male as being donned in a fox social group. Roald Dahl had fantastic Mr. Fox, but of course, he missed the point. The group cohesion is down to the female. She feeds the cubs, she dominates how the group operates. 
So as you can see, they're all grown up now. That was odd. <laughs> for some animals, death can have different so here, meanings than it has for. So here, I might not know what happened, but uh, a, uh, one of uh, the the victim's babies uh, didn't survive through a storm. And then try one. So it's and well, you were done, I, you press this one, which is well sad. <laughs> um. For us. Definitely not this one. Our dark male and red female pup are learning it's a tough world for a predator. Like their mom, they'll have to do whatever they must to survive. Millions of these little fish come to the beach to spawn, and everyone comes out to share in the bounty. The siblings have not yet developed into the loners they're sure to become as adults. They still spend a considerable amount of time. Because look very different from red foxes. They've got these very short legs, short ears, short blunt snout. It's just an adaptation to deal with the harshness of this environment. Strong selective pressures um, that were placed on fox. Encourage them to hand food or how to have. But all pups leave. For lasting bonds with us. This is a okay. So we'll be stopping there. The time is up. I'll I'll send the link in the chat. Um, in the chat? Yeah, the chat is over here. Don't I'll send the link in the chat if you want oh! to uh, like finish just, watch, like, watching the whole video. On, um, since I skipped the these parts. Buttons, then I was like this. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you can either click on it now so before I end the meeting. So you can like continue There's watching it. But, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> the top one. Anyways, um, one. so that's the link. This blue one. I'm not. And then you can rewatch it. Should I? Yeah. Should. So thank you for listening. Uh, do you have any questions? Any? Yes, questions? I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Real. So who has a question? <laughs> Does anyone have a question? Dad, you will. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Hmm. Okay, so no one has any questions? So y'all so you all understand? So you all understand what I was saying? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. 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 Okay.